The golden key to the parallel relative switch can be summed up by the term key blending. You can say that key blending sounds akin to bitonality or polytonality that we find in the works of Charles Ives or Igor Stravinsky, and to an extent that is really true. And specifically, this theory is working with bitonality or pitting two keys against one another. However, in the case of Ives or Stravinsky, the decision about which keys get blended is purely arbitrary. In other words, that decision is based on the subjective whims of the composer. But the parallel relative switch, as you'll soon see, is based on specific, precise principles. It's anything but arbitrary. If you want to know what these principles are, I'm going to demonstrate that to you here and now. Earlier, I mentioned that this theory arose from the blues. The blues is more or less considered in the stodgy halls of academia as some sort of quaint folk music form that somehow gained massive popularity. Blues is much, much more than that. The basic principle of the blues has now influenced music on a global scale. On every continent on the planet, it's safe to say that everyone has become familiar with the sweet sound of a flatted third against a major bass chord progression. I wouldn't consider this to be a merely quaint folk music form when an entire planet has been turned on to it. My point here is that blues theory must be taken every bit as seriously as the Greek modes or the major minor key system were taught in school. And now, with the advent of the parallel relative switch system, we have a theory of the blues, which as far as I know, has never before been codified. From an existential point of view, we can say that all Western music begins with very simple building blocks, that is, the 12 notes of the chromatic series. From those 12 simple building blocks arises an extremely complex system that, when analyzed, becomes as intense as a study of trigonometry or calculus. In math, it's the same. We have 10 number symbols, the building blocks of math. What grew from there was a highly sophisticated academic study, complex and stultifying to the novice student. The parallel relative switch begins with a very simple principle. In this case, what I call minor under major. That is, a minor bass melody contained within an overriding major based harmonic environment. Simply put, you play G minor pentatonic against a G major or G dominant seventh chord, which has its basis in a major chord. If we are mixing minor scale notes within a major environment, it's easy to come to the conclusion that yes, we're blending two keys, or at least two qualities, major and minor, together. This is the very seed of the parallel relative switch. I stumbled upon this theory when I began to look more deeply into this phenomenon. I considered that, say, in an A major blues, A minor pentatonic scale is playing against it. I considered that we clearly have an A major root, so I gathered all the chords of the key of A major. Then I considered that A minor pentatonic is also C major pentatonic. From there, I gathered all the chords of C major together. At first, I compared the major chords of both keys, the 1, 4, and 5 of A major and C major. Very commonly, in late 60s rock, wandering major chords began to show up. Coincidentally, at the same time, there was a blues revival happening. I saw a connection there. That connection will be later explained. Even though these wandering major chords made a reappearance in that era, wandering majors were not a new phenomenon. We can find them in very early popular music of the 20th century when jazz was on the rise. However, in the late 60s, the floodgates busted open for wandering majors. They were beginning to be heard everywhere, first in America, and finally, the world. Let's think in terms of the key of A major for a moment. The 1, 4, and 5 of A major are A, D, and E major. Deploying the parallel relative switch, we think of A minor pentatonic superimposed upon A major, in blues fashion. A minor pentatonic is also C major pentatonic. In the key of C, the 1, 4, and 5 are C, F, and G. Now, if we string the chords of A and C together according to the musical alphabet, we get A, C, D, E, F, 
G, and finally back home to the root chord A major. When you hear these, you can easily detect the rock sound implied in them. It fascinated me when I discovered that the blues principle of minor scale under major chord environment can work perfectly well here. Here is A minor pentatonic played beneath these six chords A, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A. This theory progresses eventually into a very complex system, yet despite this complexity, the minor under major principle of the blues will remain. The parallel relative switch retains this most basic blues principle, yet when you expand the parallel relative switch harmonically and to its fullest extent, the resulting chord progressions don't necessarily sound bluesy. The important factor here, though, is that minor under major prevails throughout. For the sake of simplicity, in the following demonstrations, I will transpose all songs that use the parallel relative switch into the key of C major. So please don't comment that I'm using the wrong chords. I'm just transposing for the sake of retaining continuity of thought and keeping it simple. Now, let's look at the Who's See Me, Feel Me transposed to C major. Stripping the chords of their extensions because we're looking at how chords move to one another and not how they're built up. I'm removing the major 7 and sus 4 from the sequence in this first section of the song. Initially, when transposed to C major, the chords will have been A flat major 7, B flat sus 4 to B flat major twice, and then resolving to C major. Now I'm going to strip the extensions off of these chords. We get A flat major, B flat major, and C major. Three major chords a whole step apart. We are now hearing the Aeolian ascent. A flat, B flat, C. In fact, this is the same exact climb in I am the walrus in the key of A. But if I transpose to C, I get A flat, I am the Eggman, B flat, they are the Eggman, C, I am the walrus. A flat, B flat, C. Now, let's unpack this first section of the Who song with the parallel relative switch system. If I'm in the key of C, I think of the blue C minor pentatonic against this. C minor pentatonic is also E flat major pentatonic. So now, I extract the 1, 4, 5 of these two keys from C major we get the 1, 4, 5, C, F, G. And in E flat major, we get E flat, A flat, B flat. In this Aeolian ascent, we find that A flat and B flat come out of the key of E flat major as the 4 and 5 of the key. We finally resolve on C, which is the umbrella key of the entire progression, the 1 chord of the key of C. A quick modulation occurs after this section, and then it moves to the key of E major, but as I said, we're going to look at this from the perspective of C major. So here's the progression in C. We get F, G, A flat, F, G, C, F, G, A flat, E flat, B flat, G. So again, we extract two keys. First, our root chord, C major, which, as you can see, shows up in the fourth measure of the song. We have our root chord, and now we do the parallel relative switch process. C major is root. We think now of the blues minor under major, and we get C minor pentatonic. C minor pentatonic is also E flat major pentatonic. Now we have our two keys, C major and E flat major. The first two measures contain F, G, and A flat major. F and G are respectively the four and five of C major. A flat is the four chord of E flat major. The next two measures, F, G, and C, are one, four, five of C major. The next two measures, F, G, and A flat, are a repeat of the first two measures. We've already looked at that. Finally, we get E flat, B flat, and G. 
E flat is the one chord of E flat major, B flat is the five chord of E flat major, and G is the five of C major. We have now elegantly unpacked the entire progression. Now let's take a look at the kinks all the day and all of the night transposed to C major. C5, B flat 5, E flat 5, C5, repeated four times. Then E flat 5, B flat 5, D5, C5, F5, and finally to G5, F5, and B flat 5. First, I want to mention that these five chords are power chords. That is, they are implied triads without the third. In a sense, you could say that all of these are major chords in disguise. To prove this point, let me compare power chords to major chords in this progression. You can hear that the major chords sound perfectly fine, and they are indeed implied by the power chords. If we look at the string of chords using the parallel relative switch system, we're going to find that one chord doesn't fit within the theory, but only if we're thinking of C as the overriding root chord. Nonetheless, we get the majority, the lion's share, of chords explained. Again, we're looking at C major and E flat major. The first section states C major is the one chord of the key of C. B flat and E flat are respectively five and one of E flat. The next section, E flat and B flat major, being again the one and five of the key of E flat. But then we find D, C, and F. The D chord is the problem. There is no D major chord either in the key of C or E flat. I'll talk about this D major chord in a moment. The other two chords, C and F, work within the system as the 1 and 4 of C major. In the final section, we get G to F to B flat. G is the 5 of C, F is the 4 of C, and B flat is the 5 of E flat. Within the entirety of this progression, we are actually modulating from C major to D major to G major. So in reality, even though I said we'd be using the context of C major for all this, we're forced to go outside the key of C. From this perspective, we can say that the parallel relative switch is being used in those other keys. So we begin with C, B flat, and E flat repeated four times. Then we get E flat and B flat before a modulation to D major. So everything works up until then from the perspective of C major. Now, if we look at the next section, D, C, and F, we think instead of D major as being the root. We take D major, use the blues principle of minor under major, and think of D minor pentatonic. D minor pentatonic is also F major pentatonic. We now have our two keys for this section, D and F. From this vantage point, we find that D is one of D major, C is five of F, and F is one of F major. The same with the two final bars. We have G, F, and B flat now. We think G root. Against that, G minor pentatonic, which is also B flat major pentatonic. We have our two keys now, and we can unpack G as one of G, F as five of B flat, and B flat as one of B flat. Later on down the line, I'm gonna go way beyond what we're looking at here. The implications of all of this are profound, even though the idea may seem like a simple one. Trust me, this is going to go deep. Let's take a look at Smells Like Teen Spirit. And again, to maintain continuity, I'm going to transpose this progression to the key of C. The progression is this. C, F, E flat, 
A flat. If you're getting the feel for this, you can probably already unpack this right away. It's really basic and can be clearly seen here. Again, since we're continuing in C, we'll recall that our two unpacked keys are C and E flat. C and F are respectively one and four of the key of C major, and E flat and A flat are respectively one and four of E flat major. I've trained my ear to hear the parallel relative switch to the point where I can hear a song I've never heard before and detect that it's using this system. Once you get a feel for the sound, you can do it too. I'll describe some of the earmarks of this later on down the line to help you out, to train your ear to hear it. Okay, let's move to the jazz world now. I earlier mentioned the famous Tad Dameron turnaround. If there's ever an example of slapping a label on something without uncovering how it works, it's this one. Oh yeah, that's the Tad Dameron turnaround. Great, but why does it work? Let's look at it. In the key of C, the turnaround moves from C major seven to E flat major seven to A flat major seven to D flat seven. The D flat seven is the tritone substitute for G seven. That's from the major minor key system, different system of analysis. However, we need another system to explain E flat major seven and A flat major seven. That system is the parallel relative switch system. By now, you can see what's going on with this E flat major seven and A flat major seven. They are one and four of the switched key. Now I'm using a new term, the switched key. The switched key is the key that is subservient to the umbrella key. What this means is that my original key is C major. Implying the parallel relative switch, E flat becomes what I call the switch key, and the original key of C is the umbrella key. I'm finding the Hiromi song, Drifters, to be an interesting case. Here we have A flat, B flat, G minor 7, and A minor 7. Again, we're dealing with the key of C as the umbrella key and the key of E flat as the switch key. A flat and B flat are respectively 4 and 5 of E flat major. G minor 7 is the 3 chord of E flat major and A minor 7 is the 6 of C. I love the fact that the C root chord is never stated, but instead its relative minor chord A minor is stated. This effect works really nicely. If you're not convinced by now, that this new system is a rock solid form of musical analysis, I intend to prove it later by unpacking a number more songs in my proof of concept video. I divide the study of harmony into two categories, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal harmony is what we've been working with here. Horizontal harmony is the study of how chords move to one another in a pleasing way. Vertical harmony, however, has to do with a single chord and how it's built root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. In my next video, I'm going to go vertical and look at how chords are built within the parallel relative switch system. I'm going to clearly explain how, in the blues, the one, four, and five chords are dominant seventh chords and simply cannot fit into the context of one key. And by key, I don't mean root as is commonly mistaken in the major minor key system. What I'm saying is that there is no one scale that can encompass, let's say, G7, C7, and D7. I'm also going to explain random chord phenomena that have yet to be explained. Once you get the feel for the system, this all becomes simplicity itself. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.